So here's what I would tell you about recruitment before COVID and really after also. Our best way of recruiting is our current bigs telling their network about what they're doing and what it means to them. And so that has continued through COVID. But, but the other ways that we would recruit, so going to a company and setting up a booth or doing a lunch and learn, we haven't been able to do those things, but we have created an online webinar that we conduct every week and it's accessible on our website and we post it on our Facebook pages. So every week we'll have one to four people in a little webinar in an intimate setting where they can learn what it means to be a big. So it's really that process of between the time when someone says they're interested in being a big to when they get matched that we have really worked on in the last couple of years. Um, and we used to have paper applications. We've moved all of that online. We use a system called Formstack so that um, people can fill out their application. Now, Big Brothers Big Sisters of America uh, almost two years ago now introduced a new countrywide match management system called Match Force. Match Force is a Salesforce product that is was created just for Big Brothers Big Sisters, and it is a dream. So, um, and they have continued to improve it over the last two years. The most recent update is that individuals who sign up to be a big and fill out their application, that information is directly inputted into Match Force. So it's real time, the data is there for our staff to be able to see it. And then we have implemented a lot of technology. So a product called Acuity, where individuals can set their appointment for their interview with the program specialist in real time. So as soon as they fill out their application, they receive that link via text and email from our staff saying, here's your link so that you can schedule your interview to come in or do it virtually as we're doing it most of the time now. Um, those are the things that we've really shored up. Beverly said that that time from inquiry to match is shorter because we know child safety is our number one concern in everything that we do. And so it is a process to become a big. There are important steps that someone has to go through, but we've tried to make those a little swifter um, and uh, so that when someone's excited about it, we can get them to match as quickly as possible. really, um, again, a technology solution. So we implemented a program called Greater Giving. And if you do gala or auction type events, it is well worth the money. Um, so it is basically a gala or auction event fundraising management tool. So it does seating charts, ticket sales, online auctions. So even before COVID, we already had that capability, which was very, very helpful. So that really helped us elevate what we were doing. So the way we raise money is through events. Two, two things. We do a gala in five of our six markets, and we do a grassroots fundraising called Bowl for Kids Sake in all six of our markets. So with grassroots fundraising, you have to have a different technology solution. We use something called Classy, C-L-A-S-S-Y as our um, technology solution. So what I would say in the last three years that I've been able to do for Big Brothers Big Sisters of Oklahoma is introduce a lot of technology solutions for the organization that are solving problems that were bogging us down or slowing us down or not making us as a, an, an efficient organization as we could be. And now we are very technology heavy. So when we hire people, we say, you got to be good with technology or you won't be super happy here. <laughs> um, it's, it's just, it's a totally new kind of, kind of atmosphere that we're living in, in using technology to do our jobs better. You know, one thing that is really important 
we are one-on-one -on -one relationship. So it's the big and the little building a relationship. But what the staff responsibility is, is to give them um, ideas and tools and solutions. And especially during COVID, that's been very important. Um, we do match support with every, all parties of the match. So for the first year, that's monthly that we're talking to all parties of the match. And a lot of that is around child safety, but it's also around match engagement and making sure that the matches are meeting, that if they have you know, a lot of times our kids don't say thank you or, and, and the bigs can feel like, I don't think I'm getting through. And then we hear from the families, oh my gosh, little brother cannot stop talking about how much fun he has with big brother when they go out. But that, that's just not communicated. So we help to fill those gaps through match support. Um, we also, we used to do a lot of um, match activities, group match activities for our matches. We are not doing those during COVID which is unfortunate. We're doing some virtual activities, but um, as you know, virtual has definitely lost its glamour now that we're this far into COVID-19, but we still wanna offer those things. So um, it's just another opportunity, but they're not well attended right now. We, we are asking our bigs and littles to stay in touch virtually. But we vet someone to have a one-on-one -on -one in person relationship with their little. So that's where the safety comes into play. Um, we, you know, meeting virtually is less risky than meeting in person. So they're doing the less risky thing right now. But we are still, when we're onboarding volunteers right now, even through COVID, we are um, fully vetting them and making sure that they are ready for a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And I can kind of take you through what we've done since COVID started, if you would like. So on March 16th, I feel like that's like the date that will live in infamy for all of us. Um, we all, the staff started working for home and we told our matches they could no longer meet in person. Um, we stopped doing new match introductions at that time. We stopped doing in-person interviews for bigs or littles, basically anything in person, we stopped. Match support is always done on the phone. And so of course that continued, did not miss a beat. That's just an important part of our program. And we would never compromise that. We did, so Big Brothers Big Sisters of America set standards for us that we have to follow. And before COVID-19, that standard included in-person interviews of bigs and littles because that's how you can get to know someone the best and you know we're really looking for all sorts of things when we do an interview with someone but they changed the standards temporarily so that we could conduct interviews in a format like this so we immediately started letting our potential volunteers tell us which platform they wanted to use. We still do regular reference checks. So we get at least three positive reference checks on every big. One of them has to be a spouse or a family member. Then we use employers, friends, all sorts of other things. And our background checks, of course, did not stop. Um, we saw a lot of creativity among our bigs and littles when we told them they could not meet in person. Of course, no one was upset by us asking them not to meet in person. We had one big brother. The hardest um, matches for COVID-19 were those that were just started like January to March because they really were not in a groove yet. They didn't know each other very well. And then to say, eh, what you were planning is off the table. That was hard on them, but we did have one of our new matches. The big brother knew that the little brother had an Xbox and loved to play it. So he bought himself an Xbox. So then they're on their headphones playing over the Xbox. We had one big who delivered a tea set to her little. And so on Zoom, they had a tea party. Uh, we had a big deliver the ingredients to make a meal, same thing. Then they FaceTime together and they cooked the same meal. And of course, lots of front porch hangouts where they could be socially distanced um, as well. So lots of creativity, but still 
and not the same, right, as being in person and getting to know each other and hanging out. But the bigs were a consistent resource for their littles and, and their families. So we also, I mentioned, stopped introducing new bigs and littles at, on March 16th, and we didn't start again until May. So basically, when Safer at Home orders were lifted in our state, we started letting the adults in the match make the decision about meeting in person or continuing to meet virtually. So the big and the parent or guardian would decide what they all felt comfortable with. And that varied greatly from match to match because some matches had vulnerable people in their households or other circumstances where they continued to just meet virtually. But some of them started to um, do things in person with some safety precautions. So at that time, we started doing match introductions again, um, but still so difficult, so many challenges with that because people end up sick, end up on a quarantine. We have to cancel a match introduction and reschedule it. So where in 2019, from March to November, we made 302 new matches. In 2020, we made 177. So dramatically different. And another area where COVID has really hurt our program is our school-based matches. So we had a really strong school-based program in Norman. And it's very hard when schools don't know what they're gonna look like next week. They don't want volunteers coming in, understandably. And so trying to, to do those relationships virtually has just been more of a struggle than the community-based matches. Uh, you know, I did mention that we're not doing group match activities in person, which is a really big part of our program, having a holiday party, usually with a celebrity, um, you know, just things that we're missing. And then on top of that, the way it's had to change how we're fundraising, um, most of our fundraising events that I was talking about earlier happened in the spring and COVID-19 changed everything on March 16th. So the vast majority of our fundraising events did not happen or happened differently. So we reimagined those gala auctions that I mentioned in several different ways. So Norman had an outside movie night where they showed a movie, they had an online auction. Um, and though it was outside, it wasn't, didn't garner the same attendance it would have had normally. Um, in Bartlesville, we did a drive-through pickup of your um, dinner, go home for an online auction and program. They did song box bingo. It's something that some gentlemen in Bartlesville created. It's a lot of fun. It's online. In Tulsa, Taste of Tulsa turned into where we were delivering the tastes of Tulsa to people's homes and then had an online auction and program where we walked people through how to make a meal with a local chef who's very well known. It was a lot of fun, but very different and did not come up with the same results that we would have had if we had had in-person events. So that's really our, been our COVID response and you know it continues to be a challenge you know we are currently working from our offices we are now letting our volunteers and families either do in-person or virtual interviews I don't know how long we'll keep letting the in-person be an option considering the condition of our state re regarding COVID um, but that's what we're doing at the current time and even with our staff you all are probably experiencing this too. People get exposed to COVID, have to work from home for two weeks. Um, and we've had staff members get COVID and um, end up being home however long they need to be. I and mean, we have one person right now who has COVID. She's struggling with it, her whole family has it. So it's a real threat to our organization. Um, and so it feels like every day, every week is, looks a little bit different for us. 
for the first year last year, for the first year in 10 years, last year in 2019, we had year over year growth in children served. Um, and this year we're not going to have that again, where in the beginning of 2020, I would have told you we are on a different trajectory. We will have growth in our program every year and now we won't. Um, and it, so it's very disappointing. I'm probably the most disappointed of anyone. The board is very understanding. Um, you know, I just hold myself to a very high standard of the more children that we can serve, you know, that's what we're here for. But, you know, global pandemics are new and trying to navigate that makes it, makes it really different. And as CEO, you know, part of my job is to, because this is a very hard time for the staff. And so they are facing the uncertainty and the, you know, dealing with their families, with their children, not being able to go to school just at a moment's notice. Um, so, you know, part of my job as CEO is to still inspire hope that, you know, not only can we serve as many children as possible, because that is what every person in this organization wants to do. They want to provide as many children with a mentor as possible. And so they're all pretty sad um, about the obstacles, but, you know, they have to hear from me that it's okay that for this year, you know, we're doing things a little bit differently and, and that there is hope in the future. The littles have not decreased coming in. The bigs have decreased during COVID. So um, the, the families and the littles have stayed just as steady and our waiting lists are longer than they have ever been, the number of kids on our lists. Um, and I am very, it's very upsetting personally to me. Um, so in Oklahoma City, I think we're up to like 120 little boys. So little boys, I don't know if you all face the same thing, but the little brothers is where we have plenty and the big sisters. And we do not do cross-gender matching unless the parent and the little specifically request a cross-gender. Um, we serve ages six to 18. Um, usually if children enroll at age six, they probably will not get matched for a couple of years just because we have so many kids on the waiting list. If you're a little sister and you come in, you can get matched tomorrow, um, generally, but our um, little brothers are waiting for a very, very long time. Um, we don't usually match kids who are older than 16, so 17 or 18, we don't usually start a new match. But once you're matched, you can stay matched until you're 18 years old or you graduate from high school, whichever comes later. Yeah, the big couple program. So that is um, anyone in a committed relationship can mentor one child. Um, and we've done that forever so that, you know, if you and your spouse or your significant other want to volunteer together, because a lot of times, you know, that is a hindrance. And we always match big couples with little brothers because of where we have our, um, our surplus of kiddos. And so we often ask the big sisters who come into the program if they might have a spouse or significant other that they would want to do the program with so that um, we can match them with a little brother. A lot of our, I mean, our, our big couples, we've even had, we have one example of a big couple where the big brother and the big couple passed away and the big sister continued their relationship with the little brother. So it, it, it's a really good program. We still consider that one-on-one -on -one. Um, mentoring, but they're lucky enough that they get to. And it's not like the big couple has to always be together when they're with the little, but it does give the child an opportunity to see that committed relationship in a different way. And this is all about parent and child preferences. So they have to want 
be open to having a big couple before that is what they will receive. And sometimes they don't want a big couple and that's okay. We have other children who will. What I love about one-on-one -on -one relationships and the way that we interview bigs and littles and determine preferences and likes and what are the needs of the child so that we can find a big that will fit with that. Um, a lot of the time, sometimes in some of our markets that don't have as many children or bigs on the list, we don't get as perfect of a fit, but I love my current boss, my board chair, Susie Simcox of First Fidelity Bank. She will say her and her husband were a big couple, and she likes to say, um, we were, we're a soccer family, and the little we got loved soccer, and she thought that was just coincidental. It's like that, that was actually um, on purpose. So we like to start the match with some level of common interests, but we also take into account that some of our littles just haven't had the opportunity to be interested in soccer, for example. They might be interested in soccer, they don't even know it. Um, so, so sometimes, you know, we'll have a big who will list these great things that they, they hobbies, flying kites, for example. Well, most of our littles have not had the opportunity to be interested in kite flying, but that doesn't mean they wouldn't love it. Um, so, but we do in the initial, in our process of making matches initially, we are looking for um, preferences and likes. One of the most important factors that we look for when we're matching a big and a little is geography. Um, from, we look at why our matches close early, and a lot of time it's like, I thought 30 minute drive was gonna be okay with me, but it turns out if I drive 30 minutes and pick up my little, and then we go and do something, and then I have to drop them, I mean, it just adds a lot of time to trying to have an outing with someone every week. So, um, but th what I'm getting all around to say is every relationship is so different. and. Um, when we onboard a child, we look at what are their needs, what are their goals in the relationship. And when we do a match introduction, we come up with three or four goals for the relationship. So for example, it could be, um, I've, I remember one little specifically who, you know, didn't do well with meeting adults for the first time. And so the big would introduce the little when they would go to a restaurant and the big would see before COVID would see somebody new and introduce the little and teach them how to shake a hand and make eye contact. Um, so really for every relationship, there's just a different set of what are our hoped for goals and outcomes to help that child reach their um, fullest, biggest, best potential. What the way that we are measuring success is have we done everything we can do in each of our offices to serve as many children as possible? Um, and that is the measurement and it's not very well defined. Um, but I work with the area directors, they're responsible for recruitment, work with them directly because every market is a little bit different and just making sure we're doing everything we can do to get the message out there and serve as many children as possible. We set some new goals back in the summer uh, once we were into COVID and um, we met those new goals, but they were pretty low um, in you know, understanding what we were going through. So uh, I consider the year a success um, as we come up on the end of it considering what we have been through. But the most important thing that we do, thank you, the most important thing that we do is survey our kids and our bigs. So that is how we determine if our program is working and the success of the program. So when a child comes into our program um, at the match introduction, we do a survey called YOS or COS, so Youth Outcome Survey or Child Outcome Survey. So it's different based on your age, 11 and up, you get the youth, 10 and under, you get the child, shorter, a little different. Um, so we do that right at the beginning and then annually, we do that same survey. It's a long survey, it's a lot, um, but we believe in getting outcomes. And then 
with our bigs and our littles. Also, we do a very short survey called Strength of Relationship. It's a super easy survey to even answer on your phone. They like give you five stars and you just write each question. For the bigs, it's 15 questions. For the littles, it's 10. They do that at the three month mark and then every year. So that gives us some really good data. And with our program specialists, when they're talking to the matches, they can bring up their answers. So if a big rates a three on a question, we can ask them what would help you get that to a five. Um, and sometimes it's something that we really can help them with. Um, and there's also a lot of, especially right now, there's really a lot of casework that goes into that match support. Families, um, a bigs will tell us, my little doesn't have a coat. Or parents will say, normally this time of year, I stand in line at this particular spot and I get a Thanksgiving food basket and I just cannot stand in line this year. I have lupus, whatever the case may be. And then the program specialists are helping to make that happen along with the bigs. So um, lots of different ways that we have to look at success right now. And those are some of them. So the best way to donate to Big Brothers Big Sisters is through our website. So if you go to bbbsok.org, there's a donate button on the side. And um, the checkout that you'll see on there is actually through Classy that I was telling you about earlier, which is our grassroots fundraising tool that we use. So it's very safe and super easy for the end user and for us to use. 